Hello and welcome to the Wicked Things Podcast. Today's story is called Small Town Terrors. Locals have always gathered at the little roadside diner to share a cup of delicious coffee and usually some small town gossip. But there is something very different in the tales being shared today. After my death at the hands of the twin fishermen, I stand a silent, an unseen vigil in the small roadside diner. My unfinished task to offer witness to the tales of this small town in Florida called Port St. John. I watched as the young couple entered and settled in for dinner. The waitress approached as she usually does and collected their order. The dark-haired young man in a gray t-shirt and jeans leaned in and asked, What happened then? The heavily perfumed, athletic, blonde-haired teen girl looked around and leaned in close to the boy but the tale she offered was a warning. The following was the message I took away from the conversation I witnessed. The modern world holds many real dangers that would drive the general population to madness if they knew the truth of the unseen world. That simple truth is that we are all surrounded by creatures of myth and legend, but not all have rainbows and happy endings awaiting the brave or dumb. Belinda's story illustrates just how ignorant of the unseen world and rash thought can lead any of us to a bitter harvest. The front door to the small apartment bursts open as a frightened woman in her secretarial office wear enters weeping. Belinda turns and slams the door closed. Angel, where are you? We have to stop it. Her confused blonde roommate walks out of her bedroom in a nightshirt, half asleep, wiping at the crust at the corner of her eyes. What's with all the yelling? I was taking a quick nap. Belinda locks the front door and storms down the small hallway with light wooden flooring to Angel. It was real. It's all real. Angel combs her hands through her hair as she pulls her mane back into a quick ponytail. What are you talking about? What's real? Belinda grabs Angel by the shoulders and looks into her eyes with conviction. That website. Angel brushes Belinda's hand from her shoulder as a growing demeanor of disbelief builds in her facial expression. I told you the site was a goof. There is no such thing as real witches or magical curses. You're just overreacting to a bad day. Belinda wipes the building tears from her eyes. No, there is no way that this was just a normal bad day. Besides, even if that was all real, your bitch of a boss deserved whatever came from it. Angel shrugs and leads Belinda to the weathered leather sofa. Belinda shakes her head. Everything I said was an exaggeration, and the liquor didn't help. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. Sit down, Angel demanded from her spooked roommate. Belinda settled in next to Angel and set her purse on the cheap particle board coffee table. So what happened? Angel exhaled and offered a scrutinizing look to her roommate. Well, I got to work and everyone was in a panic running around shredding papers. I asked Ronnie, the maintenance guy, what was going on, and he said the whole office was under investigation for selling fake timeshares. Belinda shook as she spoke. Ouch. Angel recoiled at the picture Belinda was creating of the day's activities. The feds showed up and arrested people left and right. I thought I would go to jail after they questioned me about my job at the office. Belinda buried her face into her palms and sobbed. Belinda, come on now, quit crying and tell me what happened. Angel lifted Belinda's face by her chins while holding a compassionate look at her roommate's confession. Belinda took a deep breath. They took everyone but Ronnie and me away in handcuffs. Angel's look of compassion turned back to confusion. Okay, so you didn't go to jail? Belinda shook her head no. Angel continued her investigation. You didn't get arrested? Belinda shook her head no. Angel's confusion mounted. Were you fined? Belinda shook her head in defiance of her question. Angel stood and looked down at Belinda with a judgmental glare. So why the hell are you crying? Belinda wept again. I knew you wouldn't understand. Angel shrugged. What is there to understand? They arrested your bitch of a boss and those other dicks who gave you for illegal real estate deals. They're in jail. You're free. Belinda shook her head. But, but nothing. Things will get better, I promise. Angel flopped back down next to her very emotional roommate. Belinda's expression told Angel there was more to come. What? Just spit it out already. 
Angel exclaimed impatiently. They froze all the accounts, Belinda blurted out. So? Angel interrupted. Even payroll, Belinda offered. Leroy will understand you need time to get another job. We have never been late with the rent before. I'm sure it will be okay, Angel shrugged. Besides, he has a crush on me. Angel smiled as she leapt to her feet and started twerking in an effort to disarm her friend's emotional state. I'll just wiggle my butt and he'll agree to anything. Belinda chuckled through her tears and emotions. <laughs> you would, you slut. They both laughed at the thought. Angel hugged Belinda. It'll all be fine. You wait and see. I got you. You and I will either fail or succeed together. Belinda smiled. You always know just the thing to say to get me out of my bad mood. Angel stands up and strikes a sexy pose. I'm a gorgeous bitch. Now, go get a shower. We're going out tonight. Pinto's Lounge? Belinda asked with a smile. Now go wash the stink off and let's go. Angel motioned for Belinda to shoo away. Belinda practically skipped out of the living room and made her way to her room to find clothes and get a shower. Hey, I think the bartender's nephew will be there tonight with his band. Angel spoke loud enough for her roommate to hear in her room. Belinda slipped down the hallway, clothes in hand, and entered the bathroom to shower and prepare for the night's fun to come. As she stood in the shower with the steamy hot water caressing her athletic frame, Belinda heard Angel enter her room and then walk to the living room. I'll be out in a few. Okay. Angel's voice echoed down the barren wood-floored hallway. Belinda got out of the shower and toweled off. She paused, hearing the doorbell ring. Could you get that, Angel? Angel's voice responded through the cheap apartment bathroom door. Yeah, but hurry before I change my mind about going out. Belinda thought to herself. You had better not. I washed my hair. Twenty minutes had passed before Belinda emerged from the bathroom, surrounded by a steamy mist. Belinda gagged as she saw a haze wafting through the apartment followed by the pungent odor of incense. Good God, Angel, what's that horrible stink? Um, Belinda, could you please come to the front room? Angel's voice called out. Sure, who was that at the door? Belinda called out as she transversed the hallway to the front room. Belinda adjusted the belt of her dress as she entered the living room. Does this look okay? Belinda paused her entry to the living room as an expression of fear slowly filled her face. What the... She looked into the incense smoke-filled room filled with people in long darkened robes. Rope-bound angel and sitting in the center of a ring of black candles on top of a quickly spray-painted pentagram. Belinda? Is there something you need to tell me? Angel asked. I thought you said the sight was a fake! Belinda blurted out. A single robed figure stepped forward and pulled a long, serrated Bowie-style camp knife from out of his sleeve. You ignored our calls about the bounce check. Consider this our collection policy. The robed figure ran its gloved fingers through Angel's hair and grabbed a handful by the root and bent her head backward, exposing her neck. No, please! Angel and Belinda yelled out, I take life for a life owed. The robed figure slid the knife between Angel's clavicle and neck, allowing a fountain of crimson to bellow out of the wound. The bright crimson sprayed onto Belinda in rhythm to Angel's pounding heartbeat. Belinda stood frozen as she watched her roommate's life drain away. Angel's eyes slowly glazed over, and her body collapsed to the floor, following the last winding droplets of blood oozing from her wide-open wound. Belinda stood motionless, unable to find her voice. The robed figure stepped across the slowly growing pool of her roommate's essence. The pungent metallic smell of blood mixed with the odor of the incense. The robed figure stopped in front of Belinda as her eyes widened. The blonde girl stopped her story as the young man across from her chuckled. Well, that's the way I heard the story. Dan stood up from his booth and walked out of the diner, followed by the blonde. Outside, Dan stopped and turned to face Daphne. Who told you that's how it happened? Daphne shrugged. I think it was Gail. Why? Dan opened the trunk of his car. Daphne looked in with surprise and horror. What the? Dan smiled as he looked down at the very much still alive Belinda, bound in his trunk next to his dark robe and bloody knife. We saved Belinda for later. 
Daphne turned to run, but Dan's reflexes proved faster. She tried to call out for help, but found no voice. Dan had her by the throat, then forcefully bounced her head against the trunk edge and dumped her body into the trunk. I could do nothing but watch and witness Dan slowly and methodically drive away. That's it for today. Come back later for the next episode of Small Town Terrors or to check out one of our other tales. Until then this is the Wicked Things Podcast signing off.